Hey folks, it's Sam here and welcome back to another episode of Oh My God, This Looks Better Than Real Life. The Lightweight Render Pipeline was recently renamed to Universal Render Pipeline in Unity and if you don't know what it is, don't worry, we're gonna take a brief look into it today, but we're specifically going to focus on the post-processing aspect to improve the graphics. However, if you want to see a more complete overview styled video on the Universal Render Pipeline dedicated to it, make sure to check out my Unity video that I made on Unity's YouTube channel for not so long ago. What I did for this video though, for the post-processing aspect of it, is I made three renditions of this scene in Unity. I made one which takes time in the daylight and then one in a sunrise type of environment and last but not least, a nighttime. The biggest difference between the three different scenes is how I set up the lighting, but post-processing also plays a huge part in it. So first and foremost, I'm going to show you how to get the universal render pipeline to your project. Then we're going to start adding some post-processing effects to the daytime scenery that I made, and I'm going to explain why I'm using certain effects, why I'm not using any other effects, and how much of them I use for getting the results that I had. Finally, we're going to take a look at the two other scenes that I made or the two other renditions of the same scene that I made and look at how I set up the post-processing there including the lighting and then finally we'll also take a look at setting up multiple post-processing sources in one single scene. So there is obviously quite a bit to do in this video so sit back, relax, just chill out, follow along the steps and before we get into the video I just want to say thank you to Exala who is the sponsor of today's video. Exala is the video game business engine helping gaming companies of all types and sizes to sell and monetize their games around the world since 2005. Whether you're a seasoned pro developer or just getting started, it takes a lot of hard work to go from work in progress to a ready to play game. But in order to cover costs, turn a profit, or maybe even fund your next project, your game needs to earn money. That's why Exala's set of intuitive tools and services makes it easy to quickly and effectively monetize your game. With a versatile, dynamic platform, Exala lets you sell any type of digital good to support any monetization model you choose. You can easily sell and manage pre-orders, subscriptions, or any kind of microtransaction including virtual items, virtual currency, loot boxes, and season passes. There's also a pre-integrated SDK for Unity and Unreal Game Engine, so setup is a snap. Best of all, Exala accepts payments from over 700 payment methods around the world with a best-in-class anti-fraud system and built-in coverage for taxes, legal compliance, and more. Right now, you can download a free ebook from Exala to help you find inspiration and learn some best practices for how to monetize your game with topics like how to generate revenue from in-game subscriptions and how to start your game's pre-order campaign. For your free Exala ebook, just visit the link in the video description and follow the instructions on the page. All right, so with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash like, hit subscribe for more, and with that being said, let's get into Unity. So if you don't have the Universal RP in your project yet, don't worry because it's super simple to get it. You just go to Window, enter the Package Manager, and search for Universal. Once you find the package, select it and press Install. Then we just have to right-click in our Project tab, pick Create, go to Rendering, Universal Render Pipeline, and pick to create the Pipeline Asset. This is the configuration file, so we are just going to tell Unity to use this. Let's head over to Edit, enter the Project Settings, and in the Graphics tab, let's assign the asset file in this field at the top right here. Great, now we're using URP. The asset pack that I'm using here is actually the Lost Crypt project from the Unity Asset Store. Lost Crypt was released for just a few days ago, so if you want to use it and explore the project, feel free to check out the link in the description. Though, keep in mind what I show you in this video will work with any 2D and 3D assets, that support the universal RP. One major difference with URP post-processing compared to the built-in render pipeline post-processing is that we no longer need an entire new package. The post-processing for URP is actually built into the URP package. So what I normally do is I create an empty game object in my scene, which I dedicate to locating all my post-processing related components on. Naturally, I rename this game object to post-processing just to keep track of it. So let's go ahead and add a new component to this game object called volume. 
Now, URP uses a volume framework where we can define the weight, priority, and other settings such as local boundaries. In the volume component, we are first going to set the mode to be global. Global means that our post-processing will affect the entire scene instead of just a part of it. Then, let's go ahead and create a new profile. And profiles are essentially presets where we can reuse a profile on another volume component to simply copy over the same post-processing effects that we have here. We can also play with weight, which is the amount of influence the volume has on the scene. We can also set a priority, which determines which post-processing component comes first in terms of rendering. Let's go ahead and add an override. In here, we'll find the post-processing option, which contains all of our revamped effects for URP. So I'm going to take you on a wild ride where I speed up my design process and go through the effects that I add. But before we do that, I want to give you a fuller... Fuller? Is that a word? <laughs> I want to give you a more thorough <laughs> overview of some of the effects I find useful. I've started using the words thus and thorough, so I'm feeling really fancy here. First and foremost, everybody's favorite, Bloom. I know, you can calm down now. Okay. Bloom lets you highlight the lit up parts of your scene. I use this just a little bit in my environment to highlight the parts, but not too much, because if we use Bloom too much, it quickly becomes unrealistic. There is also the color adjustments effect, which gives us control over many useful components. I love increasing the saturation a little bit, change the hue shift if need be, and set a custom contrast to fit with the bloom effect I added, and the post exposure in here if I want to change it. After you add an effect, you can click all to enable all of the options. This is actually a trick that I learned way too late, where I would normally highlight effects one by one to enable them, so... Yeah, that's kind of awkward. <laughs> but of course, these are just a couple of the effects that I'm using, so let's actually go ahead and see which ones I used in my daytime scene. I of course used Bloom to start off with by highlighting the lit up parts in my environment. And then I did add the color adjustments and basically adjusted the saturation just a little bit. I actually never really used motion blur in 2D scenes before, but I wanted to try it for this one, but then I decided that it looks better being silky smooth. I also added just a tad bit of panini projection just to make the center of the screen pop out a little bit towards the camera, which looks pretty cool in my opinion. And then added some vignette to have the edges of the screen a little bit darker. So for the nighttime scene, I didn't want to use any other effects. I just ended up actually using the exact same ones, but I did modify the values a little bit. For instance, the bloom is much, much weaker now. The saturation in the color adjustments component or the override is much, much weaker as well because I just don't want it to be very shiny because in the daytime scene, I can have a little bit of saturation. Saturation. <laughs> The saturation in the daytime will obviously make the grass look greener, make the trees stick out more because the green is going to stick out more there. But in the nighttime scene, you kind of want that eeriness and the, the, the creepy vibe that the night sky can bring into your game, or probably, right? And uh, I, I, I at least wanted that in my scene, so I just ended up decreasing the saturation and the blue. For the sunrise environment, I think the biggest difference that I made in terms of when you compare it to the other scenes is that I used the channel mixer override. Channel Mixer introduces a few properties that are super useful when it comes to output channels in terms of modifying the red, green, and blue output values. I was mainly interested in bringing out the red channel a little bit more, just a tad bit more because the sunrise environment kind of, you know, you do want that kind of red, orangey, yellowish feeling and adding too much of a red channel will, you know, ruin that feeling but having nothing at all is also going to make the scene look a little bit dull. Let me know in the comment section if you guys have any other favorite effects of your own which you didn't see me using because these have been the ones that I've been using for many many years now in the built-in render pipeline and then once I you know, went over to HDRP, the high definition render pipeline, I used them there and now it just feels natural to use them here but maybe I'm missing out on something so let me know in the comment section. Alright, so that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and found some something useful in this video as in terms of post-processing in Unity 2020. 
using the universal render pipeline. Let me know in the comment section what you think of the universal render pipeline so far and if you've been using Unity 2020, the alpha version yet. I think it's pretty cool that they added the revamped version of the post-processing effects from the built-in render pipeline in HDRP into URP, which is ready to use out of the box. But I obviously want to hear from you, so let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, make sure to let us know in the comment section as well, and also make sure you join our Discord server by going to the link in the description. Our Discord is a community server for this community at Saiku, but it's also called PolyRealm, which means that it is its own kind of networking tool, I guess you could say, um, networking community as well. And by networking, I mean we have tons and tons of game developers in there who are very lovely to chat to and really like helping each other out. So make sure to join the community and become a part of it. All right, so without wasting any more time, smash like if you enjoyed the video, hit subscribe if you want to see more. And on that, thank you so much for watching. I would also like to give a huge shout out to all of our Patreons from November. If you guys want to support me on Patreon, there's a link to that in the description. I am also reworking my Patreon page to make it better with more rewards, so stay tuned for that.